Lesson 6, CAS Aircraft and Weapon Systems Familiarization. This lesson will be a basic overview designed to aid you in choosing the correct aircraft and ordnance when creating CAS missions. In the interest of time, this block of instruction will not cover specific aircraft or ordnance as there are several factions and numerous add-on assets available. It will instead focus on the general types of assets and ordnance. It is your responsibility as a JTAC to familiarize yourself with the specific assets that will be available to you on any given operation prior to deployment. We will begin by discussing the two categories of fixed wing cast aircraft. The first is ground attack. The sole purpose of aircraft in this category is to engage and eliminate hostile ground forces. These aircraft are usually slower and less maneuverable than their multi-role counterparts. The A-164 Wipeout, Blackfish Gunship, and fixed wing drones are some examples of aircraft that fall into this category. The second is multi-role. Aircraft in this category can be outfitted to engage enemy ground targets, air targets, or both. They are significantly faster and more agile when compared to ground attack aircraft. The FA-181 Black Wasp II is an example of a multi-role aircraft. There are three categories of rotary wing cast aircraft. The designation of light cast indicates that the aircraft only has rockets and or forward fixed guns, such as the AH-9 Pawnee. The lack of guided weapons or advanced optics means that aircraft in this category must visually acquire targets at medium to close range. They also often lack countermeasures. The designation of heavy cast indicates that the aircraft has air-to-ground missiles and a gimbaled cannon, such as the AH-99 Blackfoot. The advanced weaponry utilized by aircraft in this category enables them to engage targets at extreme range, even with the cannon. Although not recommended, any transport aircraft equipped with door-mounted guns can provide cast. These instances should be limited to engaging infantry or light unarmed vehicles in emergency situations only. Moving on to weapon systems. First, we'll cover cannons and guns. Guns can be found in various calibers on both light, cast, and transport aircraft. These weapons are effective against light vehicles and infantry, though their lack of impact fragmentation reduces their lethality to dismounted infantry as a direct hit is required. Cannons come in a variety of calibers as well, and their effectiveness against different target types varies from platform to platform. They are most often found on heavy cast and ground attack aircraft. The cannons on heavy cast are extremely effective against infantry and medium armor, Heavy armor can be eliminated, though it may require a prolonged period of engagement, leaving the aircraft vulnerable to counterattack. The cannons on ground attack aircraft are capable of eliminating even MBTs with just a few seconds of sustained fire. Though they tend to be less effective against dismounted infantry, simply due to the aircraft's speed and altitude making it difficult to visually acquire targets. There were also large caliber cannons such as the 105mm found on the Blackfish gunship. These can be employed with devastating effect against infantry and medium armor, Heavy armor may require multiple hits. Next, we have rockets. There are multiple types, such as the FFAR and the DAR. These are unguided direct attack munitions that often come in two flavors, high explosive or HE, and armored piercing or AP. The HE version is effective against infantry and light vehicles, while the AP version is effective on all vehicles. Though keep in mind that multiple direct hits are required to disable or destroy an MBT. These weapons can be found on most cast capable aircraft. Now on to air-to-ground missiles, or AGMs. AGMs are guided weapons that can be deployed from extreme distances with incredible accuracy. This makes them one of the most effective tools to extend an aircraft's engagement range. AGM warheads can vary in size, but most will destroy an MBT in a single hit. Those smaller versions, such as the DAGR, may require multiple strikes. The indirect hit damage varies greatly from missile to missile. So while one type might be effective against groups of infantry, others might be completely ineffective. The guidance method also varies from missile to missile. Some can lock onto a target using onboard optical systems. Some can lock onto a radiation source from a radar, or an IR signature, a laser designator, or even be guided onto the target manually by the gunner. Some missiles have only one type of guidance, while some will have multiple. Keep in mind that if you are requesting IR missiles, the target must be hot. Lastly, we have bombs. Conventional bombs come in different weights in three different configurations. GP or general purpose bombs are unguided and depending on the pilot skill can be very inaccurate. For this reason, care should be taken when employing them in situations where precision is a necessity. LGBs or laser guided bombs are guided to the target via a laser designator and in some cases an IR strobe. This allows the bombs to impact with extreme precision and when used with a laser designator allows the bomb to hit even moving targets. JDAMs or joint direct attack munitions are GPS guided bombs. While they are a precision guided weapon, they are limited to static targets and are only as accurate as the coordinates given. For this reason, the JTAC can pass target data directly to the CAS aircraft via side chap map markers if desired. 
This will simulate a data link and help maximize accuracy. Cluster bombs come in several different versions, ranging from anti-armor and anti-personnel bomblets and skeets to anti-personnel and anti-tank mines. Great care should be taken when authorizing the use of these weapons as they have the potential to leave behind large areas of unexploded ordnance, which can adversely affect friendly forces and the civilian population. The JTAC should make note of these locations when such ordnance are deployed and relay it to the ground commander as soon as possible. Lesson 7, Threat and Target Classification and Weapon Selection. In this lesson, I'll cover threat classification as it pertains to aircraft, generalized target classification, and the rule of thumb when choosing what ordnance to use on a specific target group. First, I'll cover threat classifications, beginning with low threat level. All arms fire is the most common threat to low-flying aircraft. It includes all individually operated infantry weapons such as assault rifles and light machine guns. Although not a significant threat to fixed-wing aircraft, they can become a major issue for helicopters. Moving on to medium threat level. Crew served weapons in this category are the emplaced machine guns, grenade launchers, and AT launchers. Any armed vehicle lacking anti-aircraft capabilities also falls into this threat level. Crew served weapons and armed vehicles are a common threat on the battlefield and are similar to small arms fire but with higher accuracy, range, and significantly more punch. Now on to high threat level. AAA and SAMs pose the greatest threat to aircraft. The high rate of fire and increased gun elevation make AAA far more effective against aircraft than other emplaced and vehicle weapon systems. SAMs, however, are the most significant threat to all aircraft. Their guidance systems allow them to track even high-flying, fast-moving fixed-wing aircraft. The warheads they carry can bring down most aircraft in a single hit. There are three types of SAM platforms that you will encounter. The manned portable air defense system, or man pads, are the most common type and are shoulder-fired heat-seeking SAMs that are carried by infantry. In place, their static SAMs can be crew-served weapons that include an IR launcher and tripod or radar SAM sites. The third is the vehicle-borne SAM system. They are included on some anti-aircraft vehicles and naval vessels. Moving on to target classifications. Low-priority targets are unarmed vehicles, support vehicles, and infantry. The exceptions to this rule are infantry manning a crew-served weapon can fall into the medium priority, and infantry with man pads can fall into the high priority. Low priority targets are those that friendly infantry can engage and eliminate with small arms without significant risk. Medium priority targets include all types of APCs, IFVs, and light vehicles with weapon systems. Although these vehicles still pose a significant threat to friendly ground forces, they can be destroyed or disabled with one well-placed AT shot. High priority targets are any targets that pose an extreme threat to aircraft or ground forces. Targets that fall into this category are any vehicle or emplacement that have SAM or AAA weapons and main battle tanks. Due to the significant threat to aircraft, all SAM or AAA capable platforms should be considered top priority unless friendly forces are in need of direct support against other targets. MBTs fall into this category as they often take multiple AT rounds to eliminate and pose an extreme threat to ground forces. Concerning weapon selection, you should always try to choose the best weapon for the task at hand. Although there is no set in stone formula for what weapon to use in every situation, the following tips may help guide you in making the best choice. When engaging high priority targets, you should try to use only AGMs and bombs to eliminate them. Doing so will help keep your aircraft safe by extending its engagement range, particularly if the target is anti-aircraft capable. When dealing with medium priority, fixed wing aircraft can use any weapon system to eliminate these targets though you should choose the lightest weapon that can accomplish the job safely. For instance, there's no use using a GBU-12 on a single stationary APC when a gun run can get the job done. Rotary wing aircraft should use AGMs against APCs and IFVs. Cannons and rockets can be employed against light vehicles with weapon systems. Finally, low priority targets should be engaged with cannons and rockets if possible. Bombs can be used on large clusters of infantry or light vehicles. When choosing the weapon to be used on a mission, take the target's priority into account, the threats in the area, the aircraft's remaining ordnance, and the pilot's skill. If the mission you are setting up is for an IFE that is engaging friendly forces, but you know that there is a SAM threat present, don't call for a gun run. Instead, call for an AGM strike. Also, if you have multiple aircraft types available to you, try to task the best one for the mission at hand. For example, don't send a light cast against a AAA site if you have a fixed wing with AGMs available. In the end, use your best judgment to ensure that the mission can be accomplished successfully and safely. Lesson 8, Practical Application. In this final lesson, we will demonstrate a few CAST missions utilizing the previous lessons covered in this course. Coyote 1-1, one, one. Wolf 1-6, one, checking in. Wolf 
Wolf one six, count one one, send it. Wolf one six, one times A one six four, IP gold, two thousand feet, armed with four GBU twelve, two AGM sixty five D, one thousand one hundred fifty cannon. Playtime is zero plus twenty. Abort code evil. Available for tasking. Wolf 1-6, Coyote 1-1. One, one. No missions available at this time. Maintain at gold and await tasking. Copy. Alright, so we've moved into position over this small village here and located an enemy MBT that's under a camo net in this small little ravine here. We've got a squad of infantry that's patrolling it around it out here in the trees. So instead of trying to engage it from up close or from up here, we'll go ahead and call in a cast strike on it. Go ahead and check. Yeah, my distance is 635 meters from it. Go ahead and see where I'm at. I'm at 075071. Open the map, 075071. It's over here. I'm right here, I think. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. For 635 meters, I could use my ruler here to gauge it as I discussed in the other part of the course, but I know the MSR here, he's just the other side of it in this ravine, so I can throw down a marker real quick and just test it by using the uh, shift click. Okay, yeah, so he's a little bit behind that, probably right here. Yeah, that's right on him. So we know that he is in grid square 069069. The altitude of where he's sitting is 108 meters. I'm going to be northeast of him at a range of 635 meters. So using that, we can go ahead and fill in some information on our nine line. So I'm 635 meters northeast. His location is going to be 069069. Need to switch those meters into feet. Use my calculator real quick. All right, so he's going to be at three, five, seven feet, three, five, seven feet. All right. And let's see. Now we need to get the heading and distance from IP gold, which is where our aircraft is still at. Our mark type is going to be laser. Our target description is MBT. And that's all we need to get right there. Go ahead and save this. Open up our map. All right. So our IP gold is down here over the ocean from where the target is. We can kind of see that yellow line there is actually facing kind of at it. So we're looking at between 285, 290. Let me go ahead and rotate around to right in there somewhere. And we'll try to line up our comp. Oh, that's perfect. So the course earlier when I described how to measure out your ruler measurements, I know that right about here for me, yeah. One, two, three, four, that's going to be a thousand meters. So I can go ahead and put a map marker there. That's a thousand. Two thousand. Three thousand. And from right here, that would be four thousand right there. So since it's right in there, I'll call that. 750 meters. So 3,750 meters. Go ahead and transfer that to nautical miles. So that's going to be roughly two nautical. Two eighty-eight, I believe. Yeah, two eighty-eight. All right. So that gives us. I guess I should say. 288 for a distance of two, two nautical with no offset. Okay, so go ahead and save that. So that's going to be our cast brief that we're going to pass to the pilot. Also looking down here, I'm going to want a GBU strike on this, so I'm going to call for that. As well, because he's down kind of between these rocks, I want the aircraft to come from this side, but I don't want it to fly directly over me, so... Go ahead and see. Let me zoom down in here a little bit. Yeah. We can we'll just have the plane come direct at 270. So it'll come and drop the bomb down in here. So yeah, we'll make the final attack heading 270. Alright, I'll go ahead and contact the 
aircraft. Go ahead and delete this out of here. Wolf 16, Coyote 11. Type 1 in effect, advise and ready for 9 line. Wolf 16, ready to copy. Line is as follows Gold, 288, 2 nautical, 357 feet, MBT, grid 069069, laser, 635 meters northeast, pilot discretion. Read back, 357 feet. 069069, 069, 635 meters northeast. Feedback correct. Advise and ready to copy remarks. Ready to copy remarks. Request GBU 12. Final attack heading 270. Notify IP inbound. Wolf 16. IP inbound. Continue. Lays on. Lays in. Spot. Wolf 1-6 in from the east. Wolf 1-6 cleared hot. Pickle. Jack 1. Wolf 1 6, no further tasking available. You may depart. Alright, my fire team here, we were crossing from those rocks and we took sniper fire from a structure due east of us. We took one casualty who's being rendered aid right now. We've set up a perimeter and my team leader has authorized me to call in a cast strike. So, step one is going to be getting the information I need to pass on to the cast aircraft. All right, there's my sniper there hiding in that structure. The structure is 235 to 240 meters from us. All right, there is also a dirt road here that I can see that is running between us and him. So we're on the west side, he's on the east side. As well, I noticed there was a blue and white combine out there. So I can use that information, the road and the combine's location to help get my cast aircraft on target. I know I have available a Pawnee, so it's going to be light cast strike. I want to use rockets because with him being inside the building, guns probably won't do much to him. So I'll go ahead and figure out what my location is. So we're at 037074. Open my map. All right, so 037074. So we're going to be right here, which means he's going to be over here at this house. All right, from that, I also want to mark our position with green smoke before the choppers en route. Wolf 16, this is Coyote 11, tasking available. Advise when ready to copy. Wolf 16, ready to copy. Wolf 16, Coyote 11, 5 line, type 2, BOT, rockets. My position is 037074. Marked by green smoke. Target location is single story structure next to a blue and white combine. 240 meters east of my position. Single sniper, no mark. Make all attacks over my right shoulder with right pulls off target. Keep all effects of fire east of the dirt road. Wolf 1-6 copies. Over your right shoulder. Right pulls. Keep all effects of fire east of the dirt road. Pushing. Wolf 1-6, continue. Wolf 1-6, tally target. Wolf 1-6, cleared hot. Alright, up here ahead of us, we have a BTRK who's at a little checkpoint. I have a heavy cast that's already checked in. He's back here behind me. 
We'll go ahead and set up a cast mission for him. This will be a Type 1 since I can visually acquire both the target and the attacking aircraft. Using my GPS, I can see that my coordinates are 050081. I'm also referencing where I'm at in the GPS. I can see that I'm just above between the eye and the triangle. That's going to help me here in a second. So go ahead and open my map. Zoom in. All right, I'm in 050081. And I know from when I was looking at this that I'm somewhere right in here. I'm going to go ahead and put a map marker. Check. All right, so yeah, it's just a little bit to the left where I'm at. And just move that one just a bit. And it's pretty much right under me. Now I could use my range finder here, get the range and then use the azimuth and then use the compass on the map to find it. Or since there is a noticeable terrain feature here, the road, and he's just the other side of it. I can line up on him, open my map, zoom out just a bit, bring my compass over and then use it as a ruler. Place my marker down at the end. BTR, and now I know that that's roughly where he's at. That's going to be in 048085. I'm going to be marking this target with a red smoke grenade. And since my helo is already on standby, I can just pass the tasking to him. Wolf 16, this is Coyote 11, 5 line, Type 1, BOT, Dagger. My position is 050081. Target location is 048085. Single BTRK in the open, marked by red smoke. Wolf 16 copies. Pushing. Wolf 16, continue. Wolf 16, tally target. In from the west. Wolf 16, cleared hot. This concludes the Joint Terminal Attack Controller Certification course. It is my hope that if you've watched the lessons in this course that you've come away having learned something new and that the information covered here may aid you on the battlefield. I'd also like to apologize that it has taken over six years to get part three up. The Milsim unit that I was creating this course for disbanded during the recording of the practical application portion. It was for this reason that I decided to shelve the project. But due to comments requesting its completion, I dusted it off and finished it. Thank you for your time and attention.